Embrace the might of tools to unleash prodigious triumphs in labor. Lucius Maximus. This ancient quote teaches us three lessons. Work is honorable as battle, something to be triumphed. Tools are the enablers of the triumph. And third, double check every source because this quote and the author, while sound wise, are made up by an AI model. Within NeoVim, of course. Today, we're looking at the fanciest available AI tooling that integrate with NeoVim and can help us build software and think. We'll be comparing these models against each other within the same criteria. Installation and interface, I'll call that UX. Quality and accuracy, how much extra work is needed on my behalf for the code. Then the cost, is my time worth it? To test the models, I'm going to give them a task of scraping the web. Not too complicated, but requires some extra skills beyond raw code. It's not about writing a Fibonacci function. I think the world is tired of simple examples. Now, because the result may surprise you, I want to explain how I got there. So stick till the end and without further ado, let's go. ChatGPT is the holy grail of AI and code generation specifically GPT-4 and 4 Turbo. These are almost unmatched. It works great via web UI, so I'll start by asking it to create a ghost scraper and use the output for comparison. There's a thorough explanation of the output and a nice piece of documented code that actually runs. Is it perfect? Probably not, but it works. And to be honest, my prompt isn't great either, so I'll take what I get here. When it comes to NeoVim, ChatGPT is powered by a fantastic community plugin. To get it, it needs to be installed with three simple dependencies to handle its UI and results. Once Lazy has it, we need to handle authentication. The key for OpenAI can be either kept in the environment or more preferably fetched from a secure vault. This is an elegant feature added by the author, so I'll be using 1Password CLI to fetch my code. This is a nice solution, but can get quite annoying to reapprove one passwords every time Vim starts, so keep that in mind. Lazy installs the plugin and the access approval immediately pops. The first command is simply ChatGPT, which opens a UI with the prompt and results. I can start chatting with the system and this method is pretty straightforward. While not going through the web UI, it's still not what I'm aiming for and is mainly used for general questions. Speaking about general questions, it may be wiser to ask a professional, which can be done using the many profiles bundled into this plugin using the act as command. There are too many options from a tour guide through a marketing director, even a password generator. Let's use the generator to create a 20 characters password with symbols and numbers to show how it works. Once it's generated with control Y, I can copy the result and use it later on wherever I want. Another interesting profile is the Linux terminal bash command line. This serves as a prompt to test shell snippets, which can come in handy if you don't run Linux and want something quick. I can test all kinds of things like who am I and even use sudo for commands and it responds pretty nice. Let's get serious and do some real code generation, starting from a simple comment of the same request made to the web UI. This can be handled using the code completion feature of the plugin. Now, this result is not quite what you want, or anyone actually, so I let it off the hook with the fact that it's using GPT-3 right now, and my prompts again are not top tier. So with a little bit of guidance, the output gets real. Note that the generated code is presented as optional to begin with, and can be either accepted or sent back for further iterations. I can hit enter to accept, and voila, a GPT generated scraping script. Next on the list is the edit with instructions UI, which in first glance might seem irrelevant, but it packs some powerful options and lots of key bindings that help edit code on the fly by selecting different chunks and asking the model to act on them. For example, asking it to add comments explaining the code for future maintainers. Lastly, the cherry on top of this plugin, and hands down the one I use 99% of times, GPT run. It adds another set of subcommands, starting from test generation through code completion like we've seen earlier, fixing bugs, correcting grammar, code optimization, and summarizing text. It's really a Swiss Army tool section of the plugin that really does it all. Let's ask it again to explain the code. Now, it isn't hard to explain what adding two numbers is doing. Let's test it on something more complicated. I'll use the output from the code generated earlier for the eBay scraper. I'll wrap the function. By the way, this is done with text objects. Catch the video above if this is the first time you hear about these. With the range as input, I'll send it to GPT, to the explain utility, 
And after thinking for a while, it shoots a passage that I can scroll and read in simple language and explain what the code does. Imagine starting to work with an existing code base in someone else's spaghetti code. This can be a lifesaver. Now, just to show off, let's use the test feature. This works beautifully by adding a few test scenarios, well thought out edge cases and comments to go with them. I must say ChatGPT's plugin is as powerful as it gets. As you'll see, some other plugins give it a fair fight, especially when it comes to UX, but at least in code skills, it's hard to compete with. That said, if you want to use the GPT-4 model, it has a subscription fee, which if used is totally worth it in my opinion. But we're here to explore all options, so let's move on and just give it a rate. So in terms of installation and UI, I give it a four out of five. It works perfectly. The UI is not as perfect as you'll see, but the quality of code is five out of five. And for costs, it's three out of five because it's not a cheap service. But again, in my opinion, worth every penny. As for its ability to write a scraping tool, however, it's not perfect, but it works. The problem starts when I try to run the code multiple times, not to mention automated constantly. It starts getting error responses, which at some point even includes threats from the system scraped, saying that they don't allow such automations and will ban my IP if this persists. This is exactly where the sponsor of today's video comes in. Bright Data is perfect for the task, among many other features like templated scraping methods and code ready to go, even offline data sets to run analysis on. Web Unlocker is essentially a smart proxy chain that when activated streams the local process through Bright Data's systems. Not only that, the IP will keep rotating and if the systems has CAPTCHA integrated, Bright Data has got you covered with that as well. This lets me run the automation as much as I want with no issues. And by that, I also mean scaling it to dozens or hundreds of instances running simultaneously, collecting data for me. To use GPT for the task, I'll open Edit with Instructions panel and ask it to use Proxy with Credentials. Once accepted, I'm getting AI recommendations for the newly changed function. I'll just add Bright Data's credentials from the UI. And just like that, the code runs yet again. To check out Bright Data, check out the link in the description where you'll also get some free credits to get started with. The next gem is not as much as an alternative, but a great sidekick to really anyone. Codium is a free for individuals plugin that officially supports NeoVim. The plugin offers completions through CMP, so installing requires adding it to the package manager and adding a source line to CMP. With this out of the way, there's one command only called Codium Auth. The process is pretty simple. Out of the few options I selected, the easiest method is opening a web page with a token, copying that and pasting back to the prompted line. Once the key is saved, we're ready to go. And you'll see Codium pops even with writing comments. This helps with ideation, language, anything it can really, including code. Now, mind you, this is not a full on generative model like the other plugins here, but again, more of a sidekick. So if I want numbers added and I've got a function signature, it'll help me fill it and add comments and anything it understands I'm trying to do. If I create a simple struct, it'll even offer fields with their types. Trying to fill in struct comes with suggestions for the values, which funny enough has always tendency for Hispanic names, which I love and it shows some character. Codium is also aware of changes I'm making to my struct. So as you can see, I now add last name and age. And if I try to create that, I now have Manuel Lopez as the new person I'm creating. If my comments are going to be specific enough, Codium jumps on the opportunity to fill them exactly as described while filling in the missing data on its own. Now, this works great as it does here with larger code bases and lots of context. Just remember, it requires a paid license if you're doing it professionally. Summing it up, Codium gets five out of five for the installation process, which is flawless. The quality, three out of five. It's a good janitor, but not a full-blown generation model, but it's not meant to be. The cost is zero, so it gets five out of five. And here's the thing, it's not my primary source of code generation, but it definitely stays with me for sure. It's small, elegant, free, and to be honest, sometimes exactly what I need. Okay, the big guns are out now. Copilot is the famous GitHub's AI system to help you build applications. The plugin is also provided by GitHub themselves, but maintained by the one and only Team Pope. This means that this is a plugin you can trust. Copilot is by far the most popular choice with developers, and that was also obvious in a poll I ran recently. Let's see why. 
As expected, with Tpop's plugins, the installation can't get any easier. It's one line added to Lazy, and that's basically all you need. I also went ahead and added some tweaks to change the key bindings and some mappings, but that's really not necessary. One important note is that Copilot is using Ghost Text for suggestions, which is nice way, in my opinion, to show results without you having to interact with them, accept or ignore. For that, you'd want to have ghost text enabled within CMP. I prefer that over menu suggestions because it doesn't pop over existing code and makes more sense in my workflow. Once installed, run Copilot off. I'm already signed in, but if you aren't, you'll be sent to GitHub for a quick authorization, a six digit approval code, and that's basically it. The plugin adds a bunch of commands like disabling, enabling and do stuff on the go and a few other options that we'll take a look at later. But this is mainly for management and not for daily use. So if I go ahead and start running with it, if I just start typing a comment, it starts laying out suggestions that I can accept or ignore. If I accept, it'll keep going with further code generated on the fly based on the context. You will see Codium and Copilot running alongside each other here. Both use CMP for completions, one with suggestions and the other one with ghost text. For a while, this seemed like a nice way to enjoy both systems. I'm not saying it isn't, but in many cases, it's just an overkill and can get actually quite confusing if I'm honest. Just like other models, the code can seem dumb to begin with if the prompt doesn't give any directions. But if the prompt is giving instructions, which can be done with Copilot's help, by the way, it can build stuff on its own, like a nice guessing game, for example. I let it do its thing on its own. And what do you know? It works. I want to stretch it a little bit and let it build its own game. So I'll have to start it with a simple comment and see how it's doing. I'm still fighting with Codium for suggestions in the beginning, but to really set Copilot free, let it run on its own. And here's what happens when I only hit tab for a few minutes. At the end, I've got a pretty robust structure with a game that works. Now, it did generate a couple of logical methods that aren't being called from anywhere and do have a few bugs. The game needs them, but Copilot messed them up at the end. I'm actually happy it did because that's a good indication for the state of AI at the moment, in my opinion. It can do a lot of things and do the heavy lifting for you, but you'll have to work for cleaning after it. And if you ask me, that's totally worth it. So to sum it up. Copilot plugin for NeoVim is, in my eyes, exactly what I had in my dreams when I imagined AI code completion. This is it. So installation and UX, five out of five, no doubt. In terms of quality, it's trained on GitHub's open source code. That's the largest open source data set in the world. So that's good and bad. I must say it's four out of five because it's not always perfect. In terms of cost, yeah, it costs a little bit, just like ChatGPT, four out of five overall for Copilot. If you're new to this channel, I've recently covered Olama and its models, and specifically a community plugin named GenNVim, which is an excellent interface for NeoVim. Since local models deserve a fair chance in the AI battles, we cover Olama again with a small twist. With GenNVim, Olama had to run in the background. With NVim Llama, the backend part is handled for the user using Docker. This is a very elegant solution that takes away the friction of managing Olama, and the model can be defined via the plugins config. Any models from Hugging Face can be integrated in here. So not only on Llama and Mistral, but also non-famous ones like the uncensored models and flavors of niche models like the excellent Dipsy Coder that comes in many sizes based on the data set it was trained on. Back to the plugin, after a quick installation and firing its command, a new pane is open with an interactive shell that interacts with the model. Now, don't get me wrong, this works and it works beautifully. A few issues I do, however, have are one, the terminal mode is not the best when it comes to yanking and manipulating text. I would appreciate a few key bindings like the others on ChatGPT, for example. This is not the main plugin to blame for. Local models tend to be slightly slower than other services. I'm running on a Mac M1 and the more powerful machine may perform differently, especially outside of Docker. So your mileage may vary, but you can see it kind of lags with its end Answers, something that with GPT, Codium, or Copilot was nowhere near in terms of experience. Olama gets two out of five for overall UX. I wanted to grade it three, but I changed it to two mainly because of slowness. It gets a four out of five for quality, which to be honest is hard to give because there are so many models and it can range between one and five. Obviously five out of five for costs because you can run it for free on your machine, especially with Docker, that's pretty easy. No trouble there. Summing the points, as expected, Copilot and GPT are going head to head even when it comes to score. 
Codium takes the lead with its pricing advantage, but numbers don't tell the entire story. These are the common options when it comes to AI coding support. There are additional commercial solutions in the form of GitHub bots and also legally protected models that train on the local IP data of the organization. There's also a huge list of open source models to check out and play with. Just browse Hugging Face and you're guaranteed to have lots of hours of fun and exploration. As for the tools tested here though, Personally, I love Codium for its simplicity, easy completions, and help with both text and code. It's a free service from a commercial solution, which means no local resources are ever eaten up for the sake of using AI. And it also runs fairly quickly. I haven't seen a noticeable difference from Copilot, for example. Now, speaking about Copilot, I think it goes head in head in its solutions with ChatGPT, especially GPT-4. While GPT is slightly better with robust solutions, Copilot has the edge when it comes to most cases. In my opinion, because it's trained over GitHub's code, and if you let it use that for your solutions, most of your daily easy tasks are pretty much covered. So I guess it comes down to the use case, or more precisely, the majority of use cases you're going to run into. If you're looking for a solution to write most of the code for you, GPT is definitely the way to go. However, you need to expect a lot of reviewing and problem solving. Whereas if you use it more as a sidekick, Copilot is better. That's also how it's branded, Copilot, but I guess that's just a way to make you feel it ain't gonna take your job anytime soon. If you wanna keep costs down, local models are definitely a good option. In my taste, they are too slow. One solution is to run them on a dedicated hardware. However, if you do, and the reason is not experimental models, it may be wiser to just pull the trigger on a full-blown service and pay for that. If I had to pick, given the existing tooling, I think Copilot is the winner. When I combine features, quality, maintenance of the tooling and everything around it, that's the winner for me. I also keep Codium pretty close. To be honest, Copilot is disabled and Codium is on most times, unless I feel I need the extra juice and then I pop Copilot back. That's pretty much it. You got your AI all set up and the tools you like are in place. But as you noticed, working with multiple tools, configuring your editor and quickly switching between environments take energy. If there's no structure or organization, you quickly get lost and the friction of trying to get stuff working will be discouraging and annoying to work with. To improve the process and truly master the terminal, I believe that Timux is unmatched and unrivaled in both managing the environment and providing an enjoyable experience. To master Timux and bring it from an absolute scratch to beast mode in just a few minutes, here's your next video to watch right here. Thank you for watching.